Hello, this is Willie Words Havemeyer, and I want to talk to you today about a very important topic. This topic, or WH Thought, Havemeyer Thought, is on the topic of dad beat dads. Now, we're going to go about this in, in um, two parts. We're going to tackle dad beat dads in two parts. Like, we're going to tackle dad beat dads, and then look for the video on dad beat dads and the women that love them. That's going to be a good one, too. That's coming next. Then we're going to talk about um, bitter baby mamas. And we're going to talk about um, why women are bitter baby mamas at times. So these are going to get very heated. I know the debate is going to be back and forth on this subject. I want to start off by saying that this is not a man versus woman kind of conversation. I know a lot of times in the black community, we are engaging in a lot of it's her fault and it's his fault type of mentality. When actually what we need is unity. So we need to actually solve these problems. See what is the problem. Get to the bottom of them. Now first, what is a dad be dad? Now... We are quick to say that a deadbeat dad is a man that is not seeing his children. That is not necessarily the case. A more um, specific definition of a deadbeat dad would be something more like a man that is not seeking to be a father for his children. Meaning that he's not intentionally, he's intentionally not seeking to father his child, um, be a protector and a provider for that child. Now, if you're not being a protector and a provider, and it's through no fault of your own, it's hard to consider you a deadbeat dad. A lot of times we are dealing with um, women who do not wish for a man to be in the child's life. A lot of women say, no, I would love for him to be in this child's life. But you got to understand that a man does not want to jump through your hoops. Like you can't put out the hoops like, hey, this is a hoop. This is a hoop. This is a hoop. This is a hoop. Jump through all these hoops and you can see your child. It don't work that way. God gave that man the right to be a father. If you infringe on that right to be in his child's life active, to have an active say in his child's life, then by all means, you can't fault him when he walks away. You, I'm not saying you shouldn't make it easy on him, but I'm saying that you can't just make a man jump through hoops and expect him to jump through these hoops when he's not with you and then say, oh, well, he, won't, he doesn't want to see his child. So you label him a deadbeat dad. That's not, that's not fair. Now, to the man who does not seek to be in his child life, he laid up, he made the baby, yet now he wants to vacate um, and kick rocks. And he doesn't want anything to do with you nor that child. That's a deadbeat dad. Now this kind of man, what makes him that way? We got to deal with the aspect of what made him that way. And we got to also deal with a very important aspect of this that we rarely talk about is that the societal acceptance in our community of that. How come it's so easy for a deadbeat dad to go on with his life. I mean, you still see him on Facebook. You still see him on Twitter. You still see him throwing up statuses. God is great. Thank the Lord for this blessed day and my great life and all this kind of stuff. They can talk about that with a clear conscience because there is no societal stigma on the fact that they're not taking care of their children. We got to ask ourselves that. Why do they still have homeboys? Why do you still got boys, brothers that you can skip back with, kick up, drink a beer, Go lift weights, go to a basketball game, shoot the shit with, and they not actually confronting you about this issue. You need to ask yourself, why is that the case in our society? Another thing we got to deal with the fact that a lot of um, black men become deadbeat dads because they had no father in their life. And you would think that would be the opposite. Just the case for me. I did not have a father. My father died when I was eight years old. So for me, I went above and beyond to be the best father that I could be. Fighting, breaking down walls. I go through anything possible just to make sure that all my children are provided for and that they all know each other and that they all see their father on a regular basis. Some men don't get that case. And it's the, it's the case of a lot of men grow up in single mother homes so they feel that a single mother can do a great job. Hats off to these single mothers that do these great jobs. But a lot of men think they are men when they are really grown boys. But in their mind state, they think that that was a great job that their mom did, even though they're living off women, even though they can't keep a job, even though their tempers flare, even though they're highly hyper-emotional. They don't know in their minds that they're missing something. If a tree grows up crooked in its youth, when it's grown, it doesn't know that crooked is crooked. They think crooked is the new straight. And that's what's happening with a lot of these men. They think that a great job was done with them by these single mothers, or they see so many single mothers out here that's doing it by themselves, or they see that there is no societal stigma on a single mother no more, so they don't mind making women single mothers, and they don't mind leaving at the first chance they get. Now, we got to ask ourselves, 
What can we do to change these things? I say, in my opinion, that it first needs to start with men policing men. Like, we actually need to start policing our brothers. If we have an inner circle of homeboys that we hang with on a regular basis, we need to actually say to ourselves, hey, bro, I don't hear you talking about your kids too much no more. I never see you with pictures of your children. I never see you having your kids. I never see your kids as an excuse why you can't hang out. It's times when I have to tell you, hey, you know, I got my kids right now. I really can't do anything. Oh, hey, I got the, I got the children for the night, so I can't really go out right there like that. But you never had that problem. What's going on with that? If he give you any kind of game, and brother, brothers, we know game because we run it. So if a brother is running game on you, be insulted by that, man. Come on now. Now, <laughs> police ourselves. We need to actually police ourselves as men and say, hey, bro, you are my brother. Why aren't you seeing your children? Why aren't you not seeing your children? Why aren't you providing for your children? You know what? I can't even fuck with you right now because I don't really like how you handle it in your parenting situation. Can you say that? Or is that out of your place? That's out of your place. But meanwhile, these children growing up around your children, and you can do the best job you can as a parent. But you still got to send your children out into an imperfect world. Make your circle good. The stronger your circle is, the stronger your family unit is. Think about that. This is Willie Words Havmeyer. Make sure you keep uh, subscribing, liking, commenting in the comment section. Subscribe. Follow me on all my social media sites. And we're going to get back with you. And be on the lookout for the next video. We talk about deadbeat, deadbeat dads and the women that accept them. That's next. But we don't really recognize it as such. We just um, hear the sad stories. Now, I cannot be the only man that has dated women with children. And when you ask them questions like, you know, why aren't you not with your children's father? They give you a lot of sad stories. And it really used to hurt my heart. You know, like, it really used to hit me. Like, you know, he's a sperm donor and he's just, he, he's non-existent. He wants nothing to do with his kids. He said if he couldn't be with me, then he wouldn't be with his child. All these kind of things. And, you, you know, you, your heart hurts for those kind of things. Until I had children and I started.